Films are our escape into another reality or fantasy that we can enjoy safely from the comfort of our living rooms. But do you ever get the feeling that the movies are watching you? I'm Matt Rogers and this is the art of breaking the fourth wall. For those that aren't familiar, the term fourth wall break comes from old time theatre plays where the sets always had three walls and the fourth missing so that the audience could see the performance. Breaking the fourth wall is therefore a metaphor for performers to ignore this imaginary wall and let the audience in on what's going on. Sometimes literally running through this metaphoric wall. This of course can translate to film and television, usually by having the actor barrel the camera. What are you looking at? During a lot of these breaks, time stops for everyone surrounding the main character. However, this is not always the case. You have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to be afraid of. This technique is often used as a comedic device used in a lot of children's television. We're doing this new thing called the circle game. Basically, if you can make the other guy look at your hand when you're doing this, below your waist, you get to hit them in the arm. And movies that don't take themselves too seriously. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. In my opinion, it's funniest when unexpected. Usually in cartoons. That makes it more special for the audience. But sometimes even in live action. But let's talk about how it can be used well and not so well. Fourth wall breaks can be a really great way to add an interesting insight and add layers to our main character. Or even to break the rules of cinema as a whole. You want a real ending, right? With plausible plot development? Don't you? Its worst use is mainly in god-awful kids movies where the star overacts and cracks jokes that are just an attempt for you to find them likeable. Your life is a never-ending series of missed opportunities. You just gotta know where to look. But if you ask me, its best use is when it walks the audience through literally what's going on, rather than explaining it through storytelling which can take a lot more time. Take Fight Club for example, we have a constant voiceover from Edward Norton's character explaining his inner thoughts which would otherwise be very difficult by just showing us the things that happened to him. Then there's the projectionist scene where we learn a lot about Brad Pitt's character by having them both talk to the camera directly to explain what's going on. Director David Fincher must be a fan of this convention as he's also used it in the Netflix original House of Cards. The main characters Frank and Claire Underwood are dark and sociopathic characters. However, having them, especially Frank, break the fourth wall feels like he's talking to you as a friend and tells you his deepest, darkest secrets. Which somehow turns him from a hateable villain to someone that you want to see succeed. If you didn't get a look at his innermost thoughts it would be quite difficult to find him relatable. We make the terror. Moving on from film and television, it's good to see these breaks occur in other mediums. Video games have been pulling these off really well. A couple of examples I'll use are actually two of my favourite games from the last couple of years. Firstly, Doki Doki Literature Club. A seemingly innocent anime style visual novel, however stamped with a psychological horror warning, which is definitely well earned. Now if you haven't played it, I'm going to ruin one of the main twists and this game is best played knowing nothing about it and I'd highly recommend it, especially since it's 100% free. Anyway, those of you that have played it know that one of the main girls breaks the game and talks to you, the player, even taking your name from the computer's system files and using it in dialogue. Going into that game seeing its cute visuals and light-hearted conversations but remembering the warning signs that showed up at the start of the game is an experience like no other. It lulls you into a sense of security and then shocks you with visuals that are with you a long time after you close the game. My favourite game of 2018 was Detroit Become Human by developer Quantic Dream. The game storyline itself doesn't break the fourth wall, however as soon as you launch the game for the first time you are introduced to your own personal android named Chloe, who again talks to you, the player. I like your interior decorating. It really reflects your personality. I mean... I like it. And even tries to make you feel bad about your decisions in game. You could have saved them. Remember, the lives of these androids are in your hands. And because of the game's incredible amount of choices you can make and even a survey she runs you through, you feel like Chloe knows you. These interactions strangely make you feel empathy and even sympathy for her.
But I wanna know, what's your favorite fourth wall break and why? I'll be chatting with you guys in the comments. But until next time, thanks so much for hanging out. If you had a good time, then spank that like button. And if you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.